I severely hurt my back a couple days ago. Michigan Tech is only a few days away, and I'm hoping it feels good enough in time to be able to get out there and shoot with everybody. But in the meantime, I've got something I'm gonna go over with you guys. It's a new arrows. <laughs> we got some new arrows that are coming out here pretty soon. I'm gonna put them together and uh, yeah, tell you about them. So I had some weird audio issues when I was talking all about these things. So I figured I'd go over it again because you don't want something that sounds like crap. I got all these arrows fletched up and uh, they look fantastic. So here's the thing about these. These are a Havoc product. Uh, they're, I think, going to be launched in August of this year. And these are going to be on their Hercules series. This is a 300 grain arrow at 10.6 grains per inch. And she is stiff. Um, the one thing that I was told about this, a couple things, but the one thing that stands out compared to other arrows is this is a nine layer carbon shaft. So um, not typical five to six range. And it's got two layers of diamond weave pattern on it. Looks really cool. Do I really think that adds structural integrity to it? I've heard it go both ways. I'm not an arrow guru, so I can't tell you specifically if it does or if it doesn't. What I can tell you is when I put this on the spin test, um, it was very similar to any other arrow. I would, out of the six arrows, five of them I cut off the field point end and one I cut off of the fletching end. That's a typical type kind of thing. One way or the other, you're gonna cut an end off depending on which side shows more wobble. With those nine layers of carbon, you're looking at a thicker sidewall. So in theory, it should be a tougher arrow just because there's more carbon there for that impact. My expertise with arrows, does it kill? Does it fly straight? Is it a pain in the butt, right? So that's what we are pretty much as hunters. Does it kill? Does it fly straight? And then you're on the line of either, is it a light arrow? Is it a heavy arrow? Obviously this is gonna be a heavy arrow uh, at 10.6 grains per inch. A lot of people like that. Some people are indifferent. Some people don't like it at all. So with that 10.6 grains per inch of arrow, I'm looking at close to 566 grains for a total setup. Four fletch arrow, about 29 and a half inches carbon to carbon and 150 grains up front. That's a pretty heavy arrow. I don't need to be at 29 and a half. I could cut another inch off of it, uh, inch off of it if I wanted to, um, but I left it at that for some testing. So we're gonna do two tests with this. We've already done them because this is fixed audio. Uh, I wanted to do a long range test at 100 yards, comparing them with my nano diameter arrows, a four millimeter arrow to see if the wind drift was any different in comparison of the two. My theory was a heavier arrow like this was gonna fly about the same as my nano diameter arrows just because more mass will take it will be a little bit more difficult for the wind to push it horizontally and then with my nano diameter arrows they're a little bit lighter and but with them being a smaller diameter there's not much for the wind to grab and that's what you get to watch right now walter wants to join us for a little bit of fun out here all right we're at 80 yards right there and it's a little bit windy a little bit windy and I gotta make it a little more dark. First I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot uh, <laughs> one time with just to make sure the sight tape is on and then uh, we'll launch the rest of them. Oh my back! <sighs> We're gonna draw, anchor, place the shot, fire, kill, hit our target. It sounded pretty good. It's actually a little less windy out than what I thought it was so I don't know if this is gonna be a very good test or not. Let's send all three down there now. And then we'll send all three of the nano diameter down there. That should be at the bottom of the circle. All right, now I need to adjust for my light arrows. I'm starting to show a little fatigue now. Man, they all sound good. I ain't gonna lie, they all sound good. All right, let me get you off of that stand and we'll go for a walk. I haven't been shooting a lot lately, so if it's actually a pretty good group, I'm gonna be happy. I haven't shot long distance in a while. Preparation for tech and out west, I need to be doing it more. He's crazy. 
They ain't looking great. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Yeah, my sight tapes off a little bit for that second set of arrows. Interesting. Okay, so what we got going on here? What it looks like is that's a pretty dang good group with my heavy arrows right here. That's a 560, that's not great for 80 yards, obviously. I mean, it's a thin five inch group, but um, well, the micro diameter must have got pushed a little bit more, surprisingly, the light arrows. I didn't think it was that windy. Maybe I said, I don't know, I was getting fatigued. I was getting fatigued. I ain't gonna lie, I'm fatigued right now. My back hurts. Okay, next thing we did after we did all this shooting out for 100 yards just for fun, I wanted to put them through a little bit of a test and send them through our metal sign that is so much fun to do just because who doesn't love to try to destroy something? Uh, granted, I know, uh, people, I know you're never gonna shoot a metal sign in the woods. I know this, it's, I'm, not, I'm not dumb, but it's fun and you get to see the structural integrity of it. So we did that as well. Go ahead and watch that. All right, we've got our metal sign set up about 10 yards away. We're gonna get the 360, or not the 360, the GoPro that's gonna be running in 240 feet per second. We have got our arrow and we have tricked it out with um, their broadhead actually. So Havoc's coming out with a broadhead, you can't see it here. And we're gonna send this through the sign too so I can double up on two videos and then you can see the results of this broadhead in the next one. <laughs> so we're gonna shoot this arrow through that sign. Let me get the camera going. Wow, it made it through the sign. That's the first one to do that. Oh. <laughs> Just so you guys are aware for the upcoming review, Broadhead looks pretty stellar. Small nick, but it's expected when you're going through an eighth inch of aluminum. First glance with this arrow, I'm not seeing any, any major scathing to the carbon. Looks good, there's no fracturing up front. Let's give her I don't hear nothing. In final closing thought, um, do I, would I use this for TAC? TAC's gone, TAC was this past weekend. Now that's how I know the audio is wrong and my back still hurts, just if anybody's wondering. Um, I did use these on just a couple shots just to mess around with, but I didn't really wanna lose them either just because I do like a heavy setup arrow. I'm not a huge on it. Um, I just, I figure if I do wanna use these this hunting season, and for some reason, if the production or the launch is pushed past August, I've got hunts at the end of August and beginning of September, I wanna be able to have these if I do wanna go with them. So I didn't use them at TAC. Do I think this arrow is excellent? Yes, from a hunting perspective, if you want a heavy hunting arrow setup, I would recommend this is from what I can see and from just the little bit of testing we did. It's durable, it packs a punch. It's the only arrow and broadhead setup that's ever been completely through that sign. It flew good out to 100 yards, granted my bow is completely tuned. Um, I like the extra thick sidewall so that you maybe will get a little bit more um, toughness out of it. If you happen to hit one of those shoulder bones of an elk or something similar, Here's the thing I take into consideration with a heavier arrow, especially in the white tail woods, is that lob. So when you get out to past, really past 30 yards, your arrow starts to lob. So if you're in public land, you can't trim lanes, and you gotta shoot through some stuff um, where it might lob up throughout 35, 40 yards, and you've got this tight window, you have to take into consideration just that lob in general. Um, I, my theory on arrows is if you put a little bit more up front and you still got a lighter arrow, but your grains are good, um, like your stiffness, that you can shoot a flatter arrow and still pack a punch with a cut on contact blade. So I, uh, I kind of am falling into the middle grounds of in line of I could go for this arrow or I couldn't go for this arrow just out of a personal preference. Again, nothing wrong with the arrow. I think it's great. And if I need it for a really big game type of situation, moose, or even the elk like this fall, I might be switching it up for some elk. This will probably be the ticket for some really heavy action. So good job, Havoc. I think you've got a nice product here. It does what it's supposed to do. Nice, heavy hitting, rigid, tough arrow. 
And uh, for guys looking for something like that, I wouldn't be scared to recommend it. Um, maybe there's something I've missed that y'all would like to know about this arrow. Hit me up down in the comments. And hopefully here soon I can release the review of their broadhead that they're dropping as well. So stick around. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. See you later. I'm going to go take some ibuprofen. <laughs>